um, because you know the implications of this are pretty significant. Um, we already got gas prices here in California at what six six fifty a gallon. Yep. Um, so you know, and that's I, not don't, even I, don't yeah. Well, and, and and don't be shocked if if gas prices are you know seven eight bucks a barrel when you get into the first or second quarter of next year. Um, that politically going into an election year that they'll want to release money from or uh, oil from the uh, strategic oil reserve. You know, there'll, there'll be all of these kinds of gi- gimmicks. But, you know, the Saudis want this higher. Um, there's a lot of reasons. If you want to know all the fundamental and technical reasons why we believe oil is in a longer term bull market, um, then call us because it's a laundry list. Um, we we put out a piece in, in February uh, of our Catch the Next Wave that you can get off our website and our blog that you know covers the thesis that we have there. So um, this is one of those ones that uh, it's we hope we're wrong, but it doesn't look like it. And by being right, it's life is expensive because then you also have food commodities like this is a ETF that tracks both oil, gold and food commodities. And this is now broken out to the upside. So we're all going to be spending more money at the gas pump. We're all going to be spending a lot more money at the grocery store if we're not already. I mean, I went in there and just bought some chicken and a couple things. It was like 35 bucks. I was like, are you kidding me? I mean, I just bought for myself, you know, and I eat like a bird. So it's like, whew, man, oh, man, oh, man. So, you know, the implications of energy um, on an, our inflation and then also how it factors into interest rates because you have a situation where a lot of the CP, a lot of the inflation numbers that the government is going to use to track and raise rates or not is affected by energy prices. So, um, you know, I, I keep just telling all our clients that the only thing I can do for you is make money in your portfolio. So it offsets what you're spending at the gas stunt pump, right. And at the grocery store. So, you know, I can't help you save money, but I can at least make it back in your portfolio. And I think that's how people need to look at this. Well, and to, to backtrack what you said at the beginning of metals and energy was the 401k portfolios. You know, what, what do 401k portfolios have to invest in? And we, we specialize in the optimization of 401ks because they have bonds and they have stocks. Well, all people yeah. have been talking about is interest rates rise. Well, what happens to yeah. bond prices when interest rates rise? So we're, we're having the same effect yeah. that we had in 2022, this last month of stocks dropping, bonds dropping, 401k portfolios getting hammered and advisors, Fidelity, Morgan Stanley, they're not doing anything. They're not letting their clients know or any of that type of stuff of what they could be going into to combat that. Well, so it's a million tough dollar time 401k for... owners are going to drop to half a million dollar owners. Yeah, it's a tough time for 401k allocators, right? Because not a lot of 401ks give you a lot of options out of stocks and bonds. If they do, if you have a 401k that offers you some sector funds, like we offer a, uh, what we call the Quiver Blue 401k that we purposely design for environments like this so people can get specific and say, hey, I want gold in my 401k. I want uh, silver. I want oil, you know, so it's attractive. You know the guidance that we're giving people. If you don't have that, um, what you got to do is find out if your 401k has a brokerage window, because some 401ks, uh, quite a few of them, especially at larger companies, they'll have a setup with a Schwab or a Fidelity or somebody like that that you can move a portion of your 401k out of the funds that they offer and put it into the the brokerage option, and then that opens up a whole world of investment options. And you can even hire somebody to do that for you once you make that transition. So that's something that, again, you know, contact us. We can help you fish around in your 401k to see if that's an option. But it's going to be an important one for people to really research out, um, it's, you know, because here's interest rates. And, and realize as this goes up, government bond, long like bond funds, the bond funds that are in a 401k, the bond funds that people usually put in their portfolio to offset the risk of stocks. Because normally when stocks go down, government bonds go up. But what happened in 2022 is now starting to happen again, whereas the stock market falls, interest rates are rising. So the bond market's falling too. So you're getting whacked on both sides of your portfolio, right? So the only saving grace I can say about interest rates, because this is a chart of the 10-year treasury, is that I can count five waves now. I Like off of the lows in 2020, 
I can see where interest rates are almost complete with a five wave pattern, which means that this first impulse higher is coming to an end. I think it might have to get up to 5%. So don't, you know, don't be surprised if we get a squeeze higher here. But after that, we should go through a period of a handful of months where rates kind of subside. We'll go through a consolidation period. And if that's a three wave pattern that kind of stays maybe above 3%, then we got to really start to watch that. Do we get another five wave pattern higher? So imagine this between, let's say, November to March. Interest rates subside a little bit in this three wave pattern. But at the same time. Energy prices are going higher. Inflation numbers are going higher. And the Fed gets forced into having to talk about raising rates when we get into March, April like that. That's the kind of fundamental scenario that we don't want to see if you want lower interest rates. 